question is just a little bit about some basics of reactions, conservation of mass. What different states of matter do here? Uh, this is this is a structurally I wouldn't say it's structurally accurate, but it's meant to be a picture of glucose. A simple sugar uh, doing fermentation in the presence of yeast to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. What I've tried to show here with the colors oxide, is trying to show some color differentiation between the oxygens, the hydrogens, and the carbons. First thing I want to note about, so a little bit about what happens here is that glucose is consumed by the yeast, chomp, 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 like Pac-Man eating up those little dots. Yeast use that glucose in glycolysis to produce ethanol and CO2 and those metabolic reactions there. So this is what they eat. This is the waste from that yeast. This glucose molecule here contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You can't make nothing out of something. You can't make something out of nothing. So if over here we only have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, then on this side of the equation, we can only have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And sure enough, we do. They're arranged differently, but that conservation of mass and energy only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are over here. Now, conservation of mass and energy. We start with six carbons. So if we start with six carbons here, we must have six carbons over here. We don't. Let's balance this up a little bit. So they'll actually be a pair two carbon dioxide molecules are going to be produced and two ethanol molecules are going to be produced and we're just going to pay attention to the carbons and hydro carbons and oxygens the counting will also work for the hydrogens but the it's just real it's just getting a little busy right here just kind of keeping it simple we started with six carbons over here over here we have one two three four five six Arranged differently, but still six to six. There are six oxygens over here. And over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This, any chemical reaction, any production assembly line must be balanced the input with the output. Now, if we start with 200 grams of glucose, There's going to be an amount of ethanol produced and an amount of carbon dioxide produced. That sum of those two right there has to equal 200 grams because of the conservation of mass. Now, that's a perfect theoretical paper chemistry. If you do this experiment in the lab and you get a number that's like 199 grams, that's a great job. Okay? There's always going to be something lost, either due to human error or Mother Nature working against you. But if you start with 200, you've got to end with 200. Now, these products and reactants here, glucose is a solid, sugar, ethanol is going to be a liquid. It can, this is, let's assume this thing is going on at room temperature. So if we were running this at very hot temperatures, maybe that liquid could boil into vapor. But right now, let's say room temperature, ethanol is going to be a liquid. Glucose is going to be a solid. Carbon dioxide is going to be a gas at room temperature. Consider... If we run the reaction in a container with 200 grams of glucose 
And I want to note that this is an open container. Now, because there's going to be a mass of ethanol, and there's going to be a mass of CO2 produced. But because this is an open container, and because what liquids do, and because what gases do, this container is not going to weigh 200 grams. That carbon dioxide gas is going to do what gases do and float away while the liquid ethanol stays in the container. So doing this reaction in the lab, conservation of mass and energy is a principle of the universe. If you lose mass in the form of gas, it's not a violation of, of conservation of mass and energy. It's something where like you just let it go, let it float off. Hope this helps. Thank you.